I really, I really enjoyed those moments. It was very, uh, it was satisfying work. You see, just like, you know, the, 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 the owner of the home had this vision of what he desires, you and I have a vision of what we desire. And in that is family. In that is an amazing marriage. Hi everybody, welcome back to Marriage Mondays on the Mavuno Church Online. Uh, you guys have been so amazing, tuning in, viewing the videos, sharing, and man, some of you have even reached out to us and we really, really appreciate it. Uh, that's what we're here for. We're here for you to help and support you with your relationships, even as we share tips online. Uh, but if you do need uh, to talk to somebody, you're welcome to email us, to DM us, to comment, um, and just reach out to us, uh, you know, via, by, via the Mavuno Church platform. Uh, and we'll be honored and excited to just uh, have a conversation with you and uh, just walk you through this journey uh, of life. Uh, my name is Emmanuel G, and I am the founder of uh, iVow. Uh, which is an organization that, uh, you know, seeks to, to, to preserve the sanctity of the family unit uh, within society. And we do it by equipping uh, couples with tools that we need uh, to have strong, thriving and lasting marriages. Now, if you have been with us for the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been talking about some very interesting stuff. In our first video, we, we began by just addressing an issue that's going on in society at the moment, uh, especially, you know, with couples being cooped up together. Um, and, and, and there's a raise, there's, you know, there's, a, there's an increase in violence, there's an increase in a lot of conflict within couples. And we talked about a lot of conflict resolution and you know, shared about some boundaries that we can set so that we can uh, ride this storm together and so that we can actually resolve those conflicts, uh, the, the conflict that we are going through in a, in a better manner than we've been seeing uh, or you know, on the reports, on the news, on the media, on the publications. Uh, yeah, guys, it's crazy. Uh, so in the second video, which was last week, uh, we got to talk about uh, the root cause of what causes, you know, the conflict and how we uh, as human beings are broken and uh, we struggle with selfishness. And it's because of the desire to fulfill our own selfish desires and needs uh, that we, you know, begin to cause conflicts. And uh, we read from James chapter 4, verse 1 to, th verse one to 3. And yeah, we learn from Paul uh, what uh, solutions he provides. So guys, I would encourage you, if you can, please go back and check out those videos. Uh, I think they're very, very awesome and they will continue to, you know, to build up on what we're going to be talking about uh, today. Awesome. So today I'm going to talk about uh, marriage is work. Now, allow me to, to share an illustration. Now, uh, a few years back when I was a little bit younger, um, you know, I was living outside the country and, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, getting a job uh, while in college was a little bit difficult. So we had to get, you know, one of those jobs where, you know, uh, you, could, you, could, you could work with your hands. So one of the jobs, my first jobs that I got, uh, well, it was my second job. I worked in construction, but I worked with a landscaper. And um, I remember it was one of the most physically fulfilling jobs. You know, one of those things you go and by the time you're done with it and you're tired and you just get home, all you want to do is just shower, eat ugali, and then just veg out on the couch, you know? Uh, not necessarily watching anything, but just resting because you know you were wiped out and you know it, it, it would feel good at the end of the day uh, but above that uh, I used to enjoy the fact that um, you know whenever you're called to a job you know especially a new job you know you come to this space and you find barren land and then you know you you formulate all these plans you know, and uh, talk to the owner and, you know, hear what his vision is. And, you know, it's an amazing vision. And so, you know, we go and plan out how we're going to do it and then begin to execute the work. 
And, um, you know, I, I am one of those people, if you're like me, I really enjoyed well manicured lawns. I really enjoyed, you know, just well done architecturally, you know, done landscaping that, you know, just gives you that ambience that you want to be in this place. There's flowers here, there's trees here, there's a gazebo, there's a seat, there's a rock, you know, there's a little fountain, you know. And um, I remember the work that went into this um, and, and, and it took a lot of planning. It it took a lot of preparation and uh, I remember we, we would go and you know uh, now dig out the land and sometimes it would not make sense some of the things that you're doing but you're told okay you know bring the truck here you know dig out this space so you dig out this space you add more soil put some red soil then you know uh, put you know do everything get some trees plants and eventually plant everything and then we had to you know begin watering um, you know, the place and just ensure that the grass is growing uh, and all that just so that we can get the desired uh, result and what the owner had envisioned uh, based on, you know, what he likes and what he loves. Um, and I remember how fulfilling it was and I, I would enjoy once you finish the project coming back to inspect it and then a year later coming you know just to to check it out and to see you know is this guy taking care of it you know trimming it uh, you know uh, you know ensuring that everything it's clean uh, that pruning the trees and stuff and, um, and 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 yeah man I really I really enjoyed those moments it was very uh, it was satisfying work now guys Allow me to, to, to share this, that marriage is the same way. You see, just like, you know, the, 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 the owner of the home had this vision of what he desires, you and I have a vision of what we desire. And in that is family, in that is an amazing marriage. And what we need to do is we need to begin planning for that process, you know, and that's the premarital counseling about learning about the institution. What does it entail? What does it require of me? What will be my role so that I am successful? Now, a lot of us don't do this. A lot of that, a lot of us, you know, uh, get it to that place that the only qualification is this feelings inside, you know, this nice bubbly feelings and the starry eyed because somebody told me, hey, you look cute, babe. You know, one of those moments like that, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and you're just like, oh, I want to marry him, you know, and we, we, we fall for that and we do not do the desired work. Now, once we say I do, a lot of us also get into this complacent uh, mode and, and, and feel like uh, I am here, uh, you are here, uh, this is what we desire to do. And uh, so let's do life. And a lot of us do not begin uh, to realize that in this institution, it takes a lot of work to make it work. Just like that garden, that garden needed watering constantly. You know, the plants, the grass, you needed to water it. You needed to, at some point, uh, put fertilizer. You know, you needed to weed, weed because there were some, you know, uh, plants that you had no intention of them being there. You need to remove them from, you know, from, from this lawn. You need the trees, you need to prune them so that they grow well. Um, and if there's fruit trees, you need to take care of them, you know, very well and ensure that, you know, these things are, are growing so that they can be, you know, produce the desired effect that you want. Guys, marriage is the same. Marriage is the same. Marriage, there are things that we need to work and put in there to ensure that it prospers. There are things that we need to take out of it so that it can prosper. And guys, it's not an easy process. It's a difficult process. But today I want to share one of the main ingredients that uh, I believe that if we implemented this as human beings, uh, we would be very successful in our marriages. And today I want to talk about love. Now, for the most part in society, love has been reduced to a feeling, uh, something that you know you 
have these feelings, warm fuzzies inside, you know, uh, and, and, and they typically come when everything is good. Uh, but when things are bad, you fall out of love. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's interesting that we can fall in and fall out of love. And that's what we've reduced love to. But I think love is so much more than that. Uh, and today I want to share a portion of scripture uh, that was written a long, long time ago uh, to a church that was struggling. Um, and uh, in this scripture, uh, it shares what love really is about. And, and, and today we're going to talk about that. And I'm going to tie it into um, what we were talking about with regards to the, the gardening. All right. And I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 4 to 8. And this is what it says. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love never fails. Wow, man, that's so amazing. So love is not this just one thing. Love is a multitude of things. It has so many attributes to it, you know, that constitutes to make this thing called love. That if we embody, then we are bound to have a true and prosperous relationship. So guys, let's talk about it. Now, the first two, it says love is patient. It says love is kind. I think this is the foundation and the basic, uh, uh, you know, uh, foundation of what love is. You see, what patience is, patience is, you know, uh, how love responds to calm or, you know, a situation or to ensure peace. You know, it's pretty much toning negativity um, and patience is basically preventive. It's taking those preventive measures to ensure that we are, you know, uh, living in, 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 in unity, living in harmony and living in peace with each other. Now, kindness is the, is the total opposite of it. Kindness is now love in action. And kindness maximizes on the positive circumstances that we need to undertake as human beings in order to ensure that somebody or, to, or rather to express our love to someone. Now, guys, if you think about this, you know, what patience is. Um, patience, man, it, it takes intentionality and it takes uh, a lot of work to choose to be patient. Now, naturally, uh, uh, even me who, who thinks that I'm a patient person, and a lot of people will tell you, you know, I'm a patient person, but I learned a <laughs> uh, very, 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 very hard way that um, the moment I said I do when I got into marriage, I was not as patient as I thought I was. Guys, I think I gave my wife a really hard time, uh, you know, in the beginning of marriage. Uh, because in there, um, there was this thing that I had expected. There was this thing that I had desired. And it was not what I was seeing. And for her, the same for me. You know, there's this thing that she had expected. There's this thing that she had desired. You know, we built castles. We built castles, huge castles of what we want it to be. And then we get in and realize, oh man, I feel or I think I have just been duped. And so we get frustrated with each other. Guys, let me tell you this. Um, it takes a long time for you to be the man that God has called you to be. We are all a work in progress. It takes a while to achieve that perfection. And most of us will probably never achieve the perfection. But the only thing is that we can do is keep trying until we get to that point. Now, until we get to that point, there's so much frustration that you will, you know, will experience from each other. And it's important for you to choose to be patient with each other. 
guys, you can't be coming to me six months later and telling me I'm quitting my marriage. You can't be coming to me and telling me I'm quitting my marriage one year later, two years later, three years later. Come and tell me that when you've been married for 30 years. At least I'll know you have done everything that you need to do. But guys, we can't, uh, uh, you know, choose not to do the work or be in this institution and not do the work. Marriage is work. Now, what is kindness? Can kindness is love in action. Basically, these are the things that you do, the, the gentleness, you know, the, the warmth, the, the little sweet things that you do for each other to build your marriage. Guys, it's just like that garden. Uh, if I don't constantly put a fertilizer uh, in the US, they say in the springtime or here before the rains, um, you know, the garden will not be as green or the grass will not grow as well or the plants or the, you know, flowers will not grow as well. This is what kindness is. The patience is, you know, the, the, the pruning and the removing of that, of that stuff. You know, when we go to the other... Um, when we go to the other attributes of what love is, uh, you know, from verse 5, or sorry, uh, from verse 4, it says it does not envy. These are the things we need to cut out. This is when you're mowing your lawn. You know, it does not boast. Uh, this is removing the dead, uh, you know, flowers. Uh, you know, it, it is not proud. This is removing the unwanted things that, you know, make that garden look horrible. You see, there's this phrase we commonly uh, like to use, that the grass is greener on the other side. Um, and it, it, it sounds good, it sounds amazing, but the truth is, the grass is greener on the other side because we have not worked on our own grass. We have not watered it, we have not done the right thing. Uh, so the truth is that the situation that you are in right now is based on the amount of work that you have done to make your garden, which is your marriage, a beautiful garden. So today, guys, I want to challenge us that we will be the people that choose patience, that choose kindness. We will be the people that prune from our lives the envy, the boastfulness, the pride, Remove the selfishness from ourselves. It says love is not self-seeking. Guys, this is a process that says that what we are doing is selfless. It's about thinking, constantly thinking about our partner and doing the necessary things to ensure that they prosper, that they, you know, feel satisfied so that we can enjoy amazing relationships. Marriage is a lot of work. <laughs> it is hard work. And it's a choice that we make every single day to do so that we can enjoy the good fruit of it, the beauty of it. Let me tell you a story in closing. As I shared earlier on, I in the beginning of marriage, we went through our struggles, you know, uh, and everybody goes through this. Uh, you know, one day we'll talk about this, the stages of marriage. There's the, 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 the you know, there's the, the dream stage where we are all excited about each other. Then right after that, it comes, you know, typically within the first, second year of marriage. And there's this drama stage when we are figuring it, in, you know, ourselves out uh, or each other out. And in our drama stage, you know, it's, I felt like it prolonged forever and ever. Um, and I remember this one day, I, um, I, uh, I go to my pastor back then, uh, and uh, you know, I just, uh, I just thought this was the safe place to, to pour out you know, my issues. And so I just tell him, hey pastor, I need to talk to you. 
man of God, I need to talk to you. And he says, ah, come, let me talk to you. So that day he was doing some, you know, um, some, some work within, you know, in his, uh, in his compound. And uh, so I joined him as he was doing it, you know, he's raking, we move the pile and I start biling and sharing. I mean, this was the first time, like for a man, this is huge, man. So there's someone who's going to listen to me without judging. And the guy was, you know, hey, I, 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 I'll never forget this. He was, mm, ah, yeah. And then he added this. This, this, this was the clincher for me. Man of God, she did that to you. I was like, yeah, imagine she did that to me. <laughs> and uh, I mean, he, 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 you know, I ate it up. I was so excited that this guy was actually listening to me. And so I said everything and poured my heart out. And then uh, when we were done, you know, I just felt ah, so much better. I've talked about it, you know, I, and now I can actually even go back home. Uh, so anyway, he didn't respond that day, but the next day uh, he responds and uh, he responds by giving me a book. Uh, and he says, this is a book that we are going to do together. Uh, I've bought it for you. Uh, but so what he did is he gathered a bunch of other men. And uh, yeah, so we sat here, we are, you know, in sort of like a life group thingy. And uh, he, he just tells us, okay, gentlemen, uh, all of you, uh, you know, in the church and, uh, you know, you've been sharing a lot of stuff and I've heard a lot of the stuff that you're saying. Uh, but today I want to ask you to take a different angle. And uh, this was the different angle. He brought for us a book called The Love Dare. Uh, and in this book, uh, basically, you know, it was challenging us to look at every single attribute of what love is. And he challenged us to adopt those attributes. Now, we didn't do it day for 40 days. We did it for 40 weeks, meaning each week we were given uh, this week's attribute and were told, go home and practice it. Uh, guys, the hardest thing I have ever done. Because remember, it's me who has the grievances against this woman that the Lord gave me. <laughs> yeah, listen to that righteous talk. Against this woman that the Lord gave me, uh, it's me who has the grievance. Why do I have to be the one to change? And that day I realized when I begin to change, when I begin to do the right things, my wife begins to respond to me. Guys, I can boldly tell you that the relationship that I enjoy with my wife today is so much better than the relationship that we had a few years back. I have understood that it is unless I begin to work on me, it's unless I begin to change me, begin to align with what God says about me in this red letters, that I will begin to enjoy true prosperity within my relationship. And this is my challenge to us today. A lot of us probably have something, and, and we all have frustrations about our partner. Every single person, uh, there's not a single person who is exempt from this. We all have, you know, a frustration with our partner. But if we adopt the right attitude, your perspective about them will change. And the way you handle them and treat them will also change. And this is what I want to challenge us to begin doing. That stop fighting, stop the conflict, stop the selfishness, stop all that. Sit down and begin to align right. This is the foundation to make that garden a beautiful garden that you desire. You have the instructions now. You have the manual. Now the challenge is for you to work on it. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is my prayer that you will be doers of the word and that in doing this, that you will begin to experience uh, the true prosperity that you so desire to see in your marriage, guys. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, by the way, if you want to find out what the attributes of this, you know, love are, turn to the iVow channel. And on the iVow channel, uh, we have videos there. Uh, look for the Love Mondays playlist. On the Love Mondays playlist, it talks about the different things, you know, I had to do, the different attributes that I had to begin, you know, aligning to, to change so that I can be the man that I need to be uh, for my wife. Um, please do that and then like and subscribe the channel and, uh, you know, we'll continue creating content um, so that you can, you know, and uh, begin to know what it is that God wants and desires out of you in life so that you can be the man, the husband or the wife that God created you to be. God bless you. Thank you very much for tuning in. And we'll see you again next week, same time, same place, on Marriage Mondays. My name is Emmanuel G, and I'm out.